Hello, my name is Carlo Canary and I will be the presenter of this class. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. I've been working in the computer technologies industry since the mid-90s and I've been focused on Cisco technologies since the late 90s, sometime around 1999. Uh, my experience uh, with the Cisco has been very focused on Cisco routing systems and equipment and I've had the opportunity to uh, work on designing, deploying and training in the subject matter uh, for various organizations including a large internet service providers and, and government agencies. Um, I've also had the opportunity to teach on college level in uh, do corporate training uh, and uh, uh, to personally uh, design courses uh, for both uh, 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 private and public sectors, including college courses and in uh, courses at training centers. I've also had the opportunity to customize uh, such courses. Um, I uh, very well enjoy uh, learning and teaching uh, computer technologies and uh, I really hope that you do enjoy this course. Thank you. Chapter 1 Objectives 1. Describe common enterprise traffic requirements and network design models. 2. Describe how to create a plan for implementing routing services in an enterprise network and three review the fundamentals of routing and compare various routing protocols lesson one complex enterprise network frameworks architectures and models traffic conditions in a converged network converged networks consist of various types of traffic such as routing protocol traffic data from whichever routing protocols are running on the network such as RIP OSPF, EIGRP, ISIS, and BGP. Network management traffic, including information about the status of the network and its devices. Transactional traffic generated by applications such as those used for electronic commerce. Mission critical traffic generated by applications critical to an organization such as patient records at the hospital. And voice and video traffic examples include IP telephony, video broadcast, and conferencing. Voice application traffic generated by voice related applications such as contact center. The requirements of the network differ significantly um, depending on the mix of traffic types, especially in terms of security and performance. IIN Cisco Intelligent Information Network Cisco has the following vision for the future IIN of Intelligent Information Network plays an active role in delivering services and applications so with the introduction of intelligence Cisco Intelligent Information Network enables networks consistently monitor manage and optimize application and service delivery across the information technology infrastructure bridges and extends intelligence across infrastructure layers in multiple products. The intelligence built into each component of the network is comprehensive and applies to the entire network. And integrates information assets and network resources. IT and IS departments should integrate the IT infrastructure with the network for conversions and full integration with data, video, and voice. The intelligent information network offers end-to-end -end functionality and centralized, unified control that promotes the business transparency and agility. Three phases of the Intelligent Information Network. The IIN technology vision offers an evolutionary approach that consists of three phases in which functionality can be added to the infrastructure as required. Phase one, integrated transport. Everything, and by everything I mean data, voice, and video, consolidates onto an IP network for secure network conversions. So by integrating data, voice, and video transport into a single standards-based modular network, organizations can simplify network management and generate enterprise-wide efficiencies. Network conversions also lays a foundation for a new class of IP-enabled applications delivered through Cisco Unified Communication Solutions. Phase 2, Integrated Services. 
So when the network infrastructure is converged, IT resources can be pooled and shared or virtualized to flexibly address the changing needs of the organization. In the third phase, integrated applications, this phase focuses on making the network application aware so it can optimize application performance and more efficiently deliver network applications to users. Three phases of the Intelligent Information Network Graph. Phase one, integrated systems, the intelligent movement of data voice video across system of networks. Phase two, integrated services, virtualized networking resources and phase three integrated applications, application aware network and services. Cisco SONA framework is an architectural framework that guides the evolution of enterprise networks to an IIN. The Cisco SONA framework provides several advantages to enterprises such as the following. Outlines the path towards the IIN, illustrates how to build integrated systems across a fully converged IIN, and improves flexibility and increases efficiency, which results in optimized applications, processes, and resources. The SONA framework layers are application layer, interactive services layer, and network infrastructure layer. And we're going to cover all three layers in greater details. So let's start with the first one, network infrastructure layer. This layer provides connectivity anywhere and anytime. All the IT resources, and by that I mean servers, storage, and clients, are interconnected across a converged network foundation. This layer represents how these resources exist in different places in the network. And by different places, I mean campus, branch, data center, WAN, MAN, and with the teleworker, whatever that teleworker may be. Could be a hotel, airport, remote site, or even from home. Second layer is interactive services layer. Enables efficiency when it comes to allocation of resources to applications and business processes delivered through the network infrastructure. Application and business processes include voice and collaboration services, mobility services, security and identity services, storage services, computer services, application networking services, network infrastructure virtualization, services management, and adaptive management services. And the last layer here is the application layer. It includes collaboration applications, business applications. By leveraging the interactive services layer, it helps customers to meet business requirements and achieve higher efficiencies. And the included apps are internally developed applications, composite apps SOA, software as a services SAAS and commercial applications. This is a, uh, a review of the updated SONA framework which we're going to cover in details in a bit and here you can see middleware and application platform, application networking services and places in a network and how they interconnect to each other and how they replace applications core common services in physical infrastructure. And here it shows you how the applications relate to core common services, ranging from real-time communication to mobility to application delivery to security, management, visualization, and transport. So let's go ahead and cover this stuff in details. Cisco Enterprise Architecture. The multiple network locations of the SONA network infrastructure layer has been identified as follows. Campus, data center, branch, and teleworker. The Cisco Enterprise architecture enables organizations to grow, optimize, and protect the network infrastructure that runs business critical operations. This architecture offers network-wide integration, teleworkers, branches, WAN, campus data center, and offering employees secure access to the services, processes, and tools. Campus architecture provides flexibility to add IP security and IPLS VPNs, identity and access management, and VLANs to compartmentalize access, integrated security, quality of service QoS, multicast to provide optimized bandwidth consumption, and automatic procedures for reconfiguring network path when failure occur, and of course, high availability with a resilient multi-layer design and redundant hardware and software features. And that will take us to branch architecture. Enterprises can centrally configure, monitor, and manage devices that are located at remote sites. 
integrates security switching, network analysis, caching, and converged voice and video services into a series of integrated services routers in the branch. Also provides head office applications and services such as security, Cisco IP communications, and advanced application performance. And that will lead us to data center architecture. This solution allows the enterprise to scale without major changes to the infrastructure. The network and devices offer server and application load balancing to maximize performance and redundant data centers provide backup services using synchronous and asynchronous data and application replication. Adaptive network architecture that supports the requirements for consolidation, business continuance, and security. Next is teleworker architecture. Campus security policies are implemented using robust integrated security and identity-based networking services. Staff can securely log on to the network over an always-on VPN and gain access to authorized applications and services. Centralized management minimizes the IT support costs. And also called the Enterprise Branch of One, it allows enterprises to deliver secure voice and data services to remote Soho offices over a broadband access service. Cisco hierarchical network model, the three-layer hierarchical model is used to design networks. And the three-layer model consists of access distribution and core layers. And this flexible modular framework allows for better implementation and troubleshooting. And it is ideal for small to medium-sized network, but it's not recommended and does not function properly in large networks. So basically, if you have up to like 5,000 users, you'll be okay above that number, the three layer hierarchical model will not be a good match or a good choice. So how does it work? Basically, we have different offices or departments that connect to switches that are installed in those rooms known as the access switches that in their turn connect to other switches in the hallways or on different levels or floors of buildings known as distribution switches that in their turn connect to the data center or server room uh, main switches known as the core switches. Hierarchical campus model and this is basically what I was talking about and you can see how the work group access or like a different office or a department connects to the access switches that connect in the turn of distribution switches in the hallways. The reason why you see two switches is for redundancy 100% and then in their turn they connect to core and you can see edge distribution module, departmental switch block and the workgroup access, they all connect to the high-speed switching at the core level. What does it mean, high-speed switching at the core level? It means if, let's say, the speed is 100 Mbps everywhere else, it should be 1,000 Mbps at core. If it's 1,000 elsewhere, it should be 10,000 at core. In other words, the core switching should be 10 times faster than switching elsewhere. The hierarchical model in a wide area network. This model divides networks into the building access, building distribution, and building core layers as you see on the screen. So the built-in access layer is used to grant user access to network devices. In a network campus, the building access layer generally incorporates switch LAN devices with ports that provide connectivity to workstations and servers. And the building distribution layer aggregates the wiring closets in new switches to segment work groups and isolate network problems. As for the building core layer, that is also known by the way as the campus backbone submodule, is a high speed backbone and is designed to switch packets as fast as possible. The enterprise composite network model. The following three functional areas are a result of the network division carried by the Enterprise Composite Network model. One, Enterprise Campus that is defined as one or more buildings with multiple virtual and physical networks connected across a high-performance, multi-layer switch backbone. Two, we have Enterprise Edge. Uh, that aggregates connectivity from the various resources external to the enterprise network. 
Now, as traffic comes into the campus, this area filters traffic from the external resources and routes it into the enterprise campus functional area. And three, we have service provider edge. This functional area represents connections to resources external to the campus. This area facilitates communication to an and internet service provider technologies.